So here's a walkthrough through 4.5J, which is one of the tech headshots. So, well, it's that one, doesn't happen that much. And uh, they are mostly all the same. So you have uh, the guy in the foreground, someone in the background, uh, some foreground elements, uh, a background plate that you can see here, and then these holographic elements. And at first we didn't really know what to do with these holographic elements, what we want to do, how to integrate them, and time went by and we still didn't know what to do. And then, well, we had to do it and then Ian uh, went and uh, came up with this uh, awesome hologram setup. So, well, let's have a look how that looks like in Blender. So, first of all, uh, if you go to the folder 54J, then you notice there are three files but no track file. And well, that shot was so easy that I didn't really care about doing um, a track file. I was just using that in the mask file right away. So let's have a quick look. First of all, I have to change my footage so that I can actually see something. So P and then use the linear HDs. And 4.5J uses the same footage as 4.5I. That happens in some of these shots that uh, they are, they have different scene numbers, but they actually use the same footage, but well in a different frame range. So this is that shot and it's actually just using two tracks or two markers to create a tripod file. Well, and luckily the camera didn't move that much because there is really nothing in the background that we could track except for this marker and a little corner of that marker up here. And since the lamp is wobbling and jittering and moving, um, this would also just have confused the track. So that's uh, how we created this very simple tripod shot. And then there is the masking file. So first of all, there's the footage. And then there are three different keys. And these keys are first keying out everything. And then there's a separate key for the hair. And this is divided by a mask. And you can see by the fact that I'm using a blur node that this is a fairly old file because uh, for a long time the feathering was really, really slow. And we couldn't use that at all if the feather was a little bit bigger than a few pixels. So we had to do it with a blur node to get these smooth edges. So that's what I used to separate the two keys. So one for the overall mat and then for the hair that was a little bit less aggressive, I think. Yeah, so this is using brighter colors, so this should be a bit better hair. Okay, here you see um, before it was a bit more aggressive and that is a bit better for the hair. Then uh, another separate key for the hair of the other guy, um, some masking for the dots, which are the markers in the footage. And you can also see that because I'm multiplying that here, that there was some problem with garbage and core matting at that time. So I also didn't use that. Well, and then in the end, uh, I'm creating the, the pre-multiplied footage and that is then being saved to an image sequence, OpenXR with alpha channel, and that is then imported into the main file. So let's have a look at that. And you can see that there are two files. And this is because of the fact that at first we didn't really know what to do with the holograms. Um, and at one point then Ian created these extra files with the H in the end where we were using the, this hologram setup. I don't really know why he didn't use the main file. There was some reason, but I can't remember. So most of these shots where you have the holograms, there is a separate file um, with the underscore H for the hologram. So here you have this gigantic holographic interface uh, with a brain and then there are cables coming out of that and stuff is happening and all of that is modeled so that it fits to the scene. Actually these um, desks or these screens, these monitors, uh, you cannot you, you cannot see them in this shot, but in other shots um, they are attached to the actual scenes because we had a tracked camera, so we could make that fit. But here you can mainly see that in the background. So this is a file that is using Blender internal, so Blender render. But there is a, a second scene that is to create the background. And this is using cycles because 
uh, we found that Cycles does pretty good sampling of images. So we are rendering that just with a few passes, so 10 samples. And that was giving a nice background plate. And th this was also, I think, one of the setups that we had before we even started to do the hologram. So this is why we have these two scenes. So in the main scene, the holograms, we have also the node composite. Maybe I will quickly render that. Of course, again, I have to change path. So 45J, accept. And maybe one thing, I don't know if I've mentioned that elsewhere, which has to do with the offset. So the original footage started at frame zero. And in the mask file, of course, we didn't create a cleaned sequence for all the frames, but just for the frames that we needed with a little bit of uh, extra frames. So that's why the cleaned footage starts at frame 30. But then to make that fit to the camera motion and to the well, sort of global time, we have to give that an offset so that it still starts at the same frame. So that's why if the sequence starts at frame 30, you have to take that number, subtract one from that, so the start frame, and then with a negative, with a minus, you just put it into frame offset. So 30 minus one, and then this is 29, this is then minus 29. So that's why there is always this frame offset. Um, so let me quickly render that. And because it's using Blender internal, it will be very quick, which is nice. So here's the background plate. And this has also been generated in a separate file uh, because all this dome was always extremely heavy to render. So because uh, here the camera didn't move that much and it was very far in the background, uh, it was just the easiest solution to create one matte painting, one background plate, so to say, and then just put it there and it would stick. So that works reasonably well. And that's the composite. So let's have a look at the file. First of all, here is the background plate with a little bit of color correction. So that is this. And then there's the bokeh blur, which always looks nice. So with a nice bokeh image and a little bit of lens shift, this creates this nice blur in the background. Then there is this layer, which I unfortunately don't have the footage to, but this is uh, an effect layer, so to say. So this is uh, an image sequence with a little bit of noise in the background that is different from the grain that we are using to uh, simulate the camera grain. Um, this is just to generate a little bit of a random motion in the background. So that is added with 20%. Then again, a little bit of color correction. Then we have the background holograms rendered with Blender internal very quickly. And then also a bokeh blur and a little bit of glow on top of that, some lens distortion, and that is then added to the background. Then here is the noise group, which is adding or trying to simulate the camera grain to that. And in the, actually in, the, in some of these files, uh, the grain or the noise setup is different because it took a while until we came up with this node group. So in some of the uh, in some of the files, it might look different. There might be a different grain group, it might use overlay and stuff like that. But um, currently, this is how it is. Then there is the flare object, which is just this radial glow kind of thing that is then added to that to make it a bit brighter in the background. And then, of course, there's the footage. So the original 4K, then we scale it down and crop that so that we have the epic 1920 by 800 format. Um, and then uh, what we always did was to unpremultiply to get these colors back because then we could hue correct them by using the alpha channel. So with a separate RGBA node, we separate the alpha channel and then do some depending on the shot and depending on the composite, we're doing some gamma corrections on that, uh, some dilate eroding, just to try to control the, the mask a bit better. And then here, by inverting that and adding a lot of feathering to that, we have then this uh, factor input that we can use to hue correct just certain areas. Then there is some RGB curves, and I don't know why they are there. This is sort of forbidden 
but well you know different people working on different shots so um, this I think this shouldn't happen because it's limiting the dynamic range but for some reasons this node ended up here uh, to make it fit better in the uh, in the background so this is a bit it's a bit bad but well there we go so that is this and here you can see that the, the holograms are in different layers. So this is just with the background holograms. And then here we have the foreground holograms like that. And then they are all just added to the footage. And then in the very end, there's another flare object uh, to give some pink glow. And that is then the final composite. And then of course in the sequencer, uh, Ian has been grading these shots and also added some special look to them and this was called the film shit because it was using um, a certain uh, color space and um, to simulate that you can go to the scene layers and then down here in color management if you set it from default to film then everything looks different. So this is a certain color curve applied to everything. So uh, if you work here, so if you enable that, then you can work and see um, how that would look like using this color space. So we were using that to simulate how it would look like in the final grade, so to say. Okay, and most of these files uh, with the tech head and these holograms work very, very similar. So yeah, that's 45J.